International Champions begin their quest for a repeat title, wearing big targets as they head back to get the final words from Urban Myers in their locker room. Meanwhile, the Hokies, intent on reversing three years of mediocrity, will walk out that long tunnel into the deafening roar of Lane City. And this is one of the most hyped home games in the half-century history of this place. Unanimous preseason number one Ohio State Buckeyes against the Virginia Tech Hokies here in Blacksburg. After months of hype, they have filled up Lane Stadium. It's a sea of orange with a little corner of scarlet and gray, but you follow the preseason number one Ohio State Buckeyes, the defending national champions, opening against the team that beat them last year for the first time ever. Chris Fowler, Kirk Kerbstreet, Heather Cox on the field. What a punctuation mark to a very compelling Labor Day weekend. We're going to get some questions very soon about this Ohio State quarterback competition, which has been the talk of the offseason. It really has, and Urban Meyer obviously has done probably as good a job as he could at keeping this very, very quiet until that first series when one of the two will eventually go out there. I think for Ohio State, it's a much bigger story than, than just focusing on the quarterbacks. It's a chance to repeat and not getting caught up in the emotions of revenge against Virginia Tech, the only team to beat them. This is kind of a business trip is the way Urban's been talking to his team about that. And this Virginia Tech team, Chris, they know this is another great opportunity for them in this stadium to try to make this a magical home field advantage, something that's been missing in recent years. Absolutely. This is a program that has slipped into mediocrity the last three years, a losing record against Power 5 teams. They need to reclaim the fear factor, the intimidation of Lane Stadium at night. night take my hand we're off to never never land and there's Cardell Jones Heather Cox on the field hey Chris Urban Meyer has remained steadfast he will not reveal that starting quarterback until the first snap but what I can tell you Cardell Jones took the majority of the first unit reps in warm-ups now Urban said he wasn't playing any games waiting so long he said simply it was a very tough decision he did meet with both quarterbacks on Saturday individually to tell them the news now what I find interesting he did not address the entire team to tell them the news he said simply they figured it out on Sunday during walkthroughs now Urban did say there's a chance that we will see both quarterbacks and Chris then even joked he might shock the world and have Braxton Miller come out and take that first snap Heather thank you good work I think we'll see Braxton Miller take some snaps at quarterback tonight Cardell Jones, the way he left off last season winning a championship, people outside might think it was a no-brainer, but as good a player as Barrett was before he got hurt against Michigan, it did make it a tough choice. It, it did, I, and I think the, the battle was intense throughout the month of August. Cardell Jones was was up, and then Brax, or then JT Barrett came back in. We've been watching their reps very closely. As you look right now, Cardell Jones is taking the reps, and he has been with it, the first-team center, Boren. So that may be an indication of what we might see with 12. Cardell Jones getting that start. JT Barrett is the first sophomore captain in the history of Ohio State. Shows you what they think of his leadership. But he will not be the starter tonight. It'll be fascinating to watch the Buckeye offense with all their different components take the field. But first up, it'll be the Hokies trying to feed off of all this energy on the edge of the field. What they do with it on the field is up to them now. Jack Willoughby, who's a graduate transfer from Duke, where he handled the kickoff duties, will kick it away for the Buckeyes. It's Kevin Asante, 
And Dewan leaning back for this is a change from who they, they said would return the kickoff for the Hokies. Willoughby's boot is high and deep and he will not be brought out. Michael Brew had a month and a half to learn this pro style system. He was a run and shoot quarterback at Texas Tech and throughout his high school career. He feels much more comfortable tonight than he did a year ago. And that's just it. Lake Travis High School ran a, an offense very similar to Texas Tech. He ends up going to Texas Tech and all of a sudden walk into a more of a pro style system. It wasn't just learning the offense. It was learning the pass protections, recognizing coverage, a lot of different things he was learning on the fly as the year went on. And the offensive line gave up a lot of sacks, but he earned the respect of his teammates in that first year. A year later, he feels much more comfortable with this offense. Senior J.C. Coleman, the leading rusher from a year ago, moves the tail back behind him. Play action. Brewer along the sideline in traffic, Isaiah Ford. Incomplete. So a first down throw, but Ford couldn't collect it. It's a good call on first and ten with a defense pinning its ears back. A little misdirection bootleg to try to find Ford on the backside. Here's this offense from a year ago, and they struggled. You know, they played well against Ohio State, and everybody got excited about Brewer and the direction that they might be going, but injuries and turnovers and the youth that they played around Brewer really caught up to him, as you can see. Side. They hand it off inside in heavy traffic in the middle. Not much for J.C. Coleman. It went from fifth string <laughs> beginning a year to the first string at the end. Yeah, that, that's been a credit to him for perseverance because he could have gone in the tank when he lost some reps last year, but he kept battling. Finished the end of the year last year through injuries. Finished with three of the last four games over 100 yards. Here's where Brewer was so good in Columbus, Kurt. Third and long. They need seven. Not nearly as loud for him as it was last year. Pressure. Dodges it for a while, but now is brought down for a short loss. So it's the Buckeyes getting a sack from Darren Lee, the linebacker off the edge, was there in a hurry. Ironically, we're going to be talking about a bear defense a lot tonight, but it's from Virginia Tech. Look what Ohio State does here on third down. They're in their own bear defense, and it's this man right here, one of the best linebackers in the country, ends up coming free because all the linemen are occupied on the inside. Zeke Elliott is the punt returner with Jalen Marshall, who was a preseason All-American at that role, one of the four suspended players, and he makes a fair catch at the 36. And here comes Cardell Jones in the first true road game of his career, Kirk. He had three that, huge neutral field wins. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Playing in Indianapolis and New Orleans and in the championship in Arlington, 6'5", 250. The arm strength. And the fact that the way the season ended, and I think is, and he had a good camp, that's why he got the nod over JT Barrett. But with his arm strength, Chris, you have to understand. He said, bring on the North he brother, he's the the <laughs> Along with Zeke Elliott, that's what I think Urban Meyer likes. There's that bear defense again. Braxton Miller's in the slot closest to the offensive line. One play, one keeper, and the 250-pounder who just gave all kinds of trouble to Bama and the Ducks defense with runs just like that. Uh, in, in Virginia Tech, their defense, the job that they did a year ago, they gave a young offensive line at the time, four new offensive linemen, this very look where they covered them up. Tough job of adjusting within that game. This is a different offensive line and a different offense they're facing a year later. Braxton Miller just motioned into the backfield. An option look. Jones keeps it and will be hit behind the line. They were all over Braxton Miller. Couldn't pitch it to him. And now a scuffle. Temper is already flaring. Urban Meyer says this guys don't view it as personal, but you wonder. It's the numbers that we talked about a little bit earlier against Virginia Tech. Seven sacks. The rough, uh, rough outing for Ohio State. And now Cardell Jones on third down here. That was the decisive stat last year. The Buckeyes at home for four of 16 on third down. In the pocket. A slam and a catch. And that's 
Michael Thomas, who scored on a slant last year against the Hokies. This is a great matchup with an All-American corner, maybe the best corner, number 11, Kendall Fuller, against one of the best receivers. He gets inside of Fuller. That was the key on a slant. Fuller gave away the inside, which allowed it to allow the quarterback at that time, Jones, to stay in rhythm with the tall, lanky Michael Thomas at 6'3". Great throw there on third down, but a good route by Thomas to work inside against Fuller. This will be a great matchup all night. Two first-round prospects. Jones over the middle, had a man streaking wide open off the hands of Paris Campbell, one of the newcomers to that receiving core, a redshirt freshman. And, and that's the focus of tonight, is how with a young group of receivers that are very talented, but they've never been out there in front of the crowd. The ball hits them in the hands, there's not a safety in the middle. This is a touchdown if Campbell holds on. There's the pressure. They go low on the bigger Jones, they get pressure, but the ball was thrown right on the money by Cardell Jones, just dropped by Paris Campbell. Otua Pawaka is the man who pressured and hit Jones just after the throw on second and ten. Pressure again. Big fella. Escapes. Stiff arm. He's very hard to tackle high. That was the defensive end, Daddy Nicholas, who brought him down. Chris, that's what you miss without a JT Barrett. And we've got a little scuffle there. We've got a flag that came in. But you don't have with, with Cardell, it's, it's more about his arm. He can run, but he doesn't really have the fast twitch. And Nick, who we saw last year in this game, has tremendous speed, takes care of the edge of that defense, and brings him down. Third and 21. Jones has room. And is brought down short of the first down inside the 35 by Chuck Clark, the safety. Now you may not have the quickness of a Barrett or a Braxton Miller, but boy, he can go when you give him a chance to build up his momentum. Again, he's a larger quarterback. Guys understand all week they've been hearing about going low on these big backs like Zeke Elliott, but even Jones, but it gives him a chance here now on fourth and manageable to be in four down territory. 16 yards on the run. They will apparently go for it. They need about the 29 yard line. Elliott has yet to have a touch, goes in motion. And now they throw it to him, and he is wide open, right on cue. The man who rumbled through three defenses at the end of the season makes an impact as a pass receiver. But Desmond Fry had Zeke Elliott man-to-man, -man, and he couldn't get out there in time to be able to take him. You see him going in motion. you got three receivers. There's a lot to get through, and there he comes over, but he's too late. Well-designed play there by Urban Meyer and his staff to give Zeke Elliott time to get out of the flat and use those three receivers just kind of as decoys, as rubs, to prevent the safety from getting on place. Jones on first down, pressured again. Throws it deep in the end zone. One-on-one -on -one battle, diving catch! Touchdown! Curtis Samuel was interfered with but still made the grab be an interesting call because it kind of went both ways and I don't know if Curtis Samuel may have pushed off himself. That there, defense number three that penalty will be declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Samuel was a running back shifted to H back to make impact plays like this. Yeah, they're, they're both kind of working against each other. Cardell Jones, a great job of keeping the play alive. That's Greg Stroman, the nickel. And yeah, definitely right call. Stroman wrapped up around Samuel, and that gives you an idea of what Urban Meyer's been talking about with Curtis Samuel. Jack Willoughby makes it 7 0 as the Buckeyes score in their first possession of 2015 season after a penalty put him in third and 21. They convert anyway, and Curtis Samuel with a terrific catch. Hokies go three and out in their opening possession. And then the Buckeyes marched 64 yards in eight plays. Took them 355 when they had four plays of 10 or more yards in that touchdown drive. Think about overcoming a couple miscues to drop by Paris Campbell, the unsportsmanlike, set up a third and 21. They got in position on fourth and five, converted. A lot of things happened there, and you could see the big playability with Cardell Jones in a quarterback there against that Bear defense that a year ago gave this offense such fits. 
Kickoff guy at Ohio State's going to be busy again this year. Willoughby taken by Green. Looking for a crease, and Dewan Green will be muscled down short of the 20 yard line. Second possession for the Hokies, and this is J.C. Coleman picking his way. He is a five foot seven ball of muscle. He won the Excalibur Award, which they give out maybe once or twice a year. He's the first running back to ever win it for exploits in the weight room. He's trying to play quickly. Coleman again wrestles for you can see the strength. The dude squats 465. He'll be third and short. Yeah, with a 38 and a half inch vertical. I mean, he is nothing but fast twitch. Low center of gravity allowed him to run out of that arm tackle there. And this tempo, they're just trying to catch Ohio State out of position. Third catch for Coleman, who cuts it back and gets a first down to the 30. Darren Lee knocks him down. Now, when you don't have a dual threat guy, and Brewer is not that guy, you put a lot of pressure on your receivers and your tight ends to win one-on-one. -on -one. Ohio State plays a press quarters coverage, which means they're going to walk up their defensive backs and play man-to-man -man against your wide receivers and your tight ends. And when you do that, it makes it tough to run the football because everybody else is attacking downhill into your running game. You've got to win some one-on-ones on the outside with Brewer and his receivers. Empty backfield against a four-man rush, and right away, immediate pressure off the edge by Sam Hubbard, who's filling in for Bosa tonight, but he's a talented cat himself. Uh, it's a great play by Hubbard, but a very poor effort by the right tackle, Wade Henson, who dives and just, just misses him. Keep in mind, Hubbard is a former safety when he came in out of Cincinnati Moeller. He moved to linebacker, and he got big enough where he could play defensive end. They are really, really excited about his potential down the road. And as we're seeing with Joey Bosa out, he's having a chance to play tonight. A tremendous athlete. It's a senior whiffing on the block against a freshman. They lost five, so second and 15. And an empty backfield. Brewer does take off. There's a crease. He said he's not a dual threat, but he's capable of, of scampering for some yards. You heard Ohio State a little bit last year. Yeah, yeah, but scampering and, and you know scrambling for a few yards is different than a, you know today's day and age. You see these quarterbacks are just as dangerous as a running back. And when you don't have that threat, that makes the defense locked in on the running back when it comes to the run game. And with this style of defense he's facing tonight, it's a lot of man-to-man, -man, which frees up not only the defensive line, but linebackers coming downhill right into that running game. Okies need nine on third down. Brewer delivers far side, broken up by Eli Apple. Tremendous sophomore corner wonderful freshman year for the championship team yeah with Duran Grant moving on Eli Apple takes over as kind of the elder statesman in the secondary especially a corner this ball's thrown to the inside it's great coverage by Apple but the ball's got to be thrown closer to the sidelines Apple has great position there and the only chance Brewer would have had is give his receiver a little bit of room to work with and push him towards the boundary ball was thrown too much to the inside Isaiah Ford wanted a flag didn't get it Zeke Elliott without that half jersey looks different, doesn't he? Yeah, that's outlawed this year. He, he, Zeke loved to show the abs, but he didn't do that anymore. He got to pull that down. High snap. A.J. Hughes, the left-footed punter, gets it away. And a fair catch. It can be tricky when a left-footed punter boots it in the air. It spins different. Elliott, not a regular punt returner, but makes the fair catch at the 20. An impressive start for the Buckeyes. He leads 7-0 and begin their second possession at their own 20. Eight plays, there were four runs and four passes called by Ed Warner who takes over as play caller with Tom Herman moving on to Houston as the head coach. Interesting three receivers there into the boundary. It's the first running attempt for Elliott who breaks free. Zeke Elliott, nothing but green grass in front of him. Touchdown, Ohio State! Lightning strikes from 80 yards out. When you play this kind of defense, it's, it's a high-risk, high-reward defense. You either get in the backfield and you get penetration, or you miss opportunities. Watch the block right here. 
by Pat Elfine, the right guard, who kind of opens it up. He gets two guys. That is a huge hole. Remember, you're committing so many people to that first wave of defenders, defensive linemen and linebackers, that you're either going to get a three-yard loss, or if he breaks one arm tackle, he's going to do that and go 80 yards. Daddy Nicholas is the man that Elfline blocked, and he's a great athlete, but he's given up 75 pounds to the guard in that matchup. Yeah. This Ohio State team and what we've seen here early is the confidence that was created late in the year has carried over into the offseason and whatever Urban Meyer said to challenge them. You know you talk about complacency and how's a team that's a defending champ going to be the following year. Whatever has been said this team has come in with a laser focus and we've just started this football game. They've not. They're not resting on their laurels. They have the same swagger and the same confidence that they finished with Wisconsin and Alabama and Oregon. They brought in here tonight to Lane Stadium. And the Hokies, who never trailed in last year's win at Ohio State, find themselves down 14, and the crowd has largely been taken out of this until Tech can do something positive. He said Willoughby is going to be busy this year, but this is not one of his finest. It's out of bounds, so the Hokies will have a little bit of breathing room. He's looking right at Hodges, but he was well covered, so he flips it over the middle and making the catch is the tight end, Ryan Malik, who was the leading receiver last year against the Buckeyes when he caught six. Clock running down inside of five in the first quarter, but it's all Buckeyes after 15 minutes. Beginning of the second quarter, dominated by Ohio State. Total yards 205 to 56. 80 yards and a Zeke Elliott touchdown run. Jones to Curtis Samuel. Touchdown pass on the first possession of the game. And now Michael Brewer and the Hokies, after converting on third down, desperately need to create something. Get the crowd back in it. Give the defense a rest. There's a change at quarterback now. Brendan Motley, the junior from Christiansburg, Virginia is in there it's a low snap he's going to pick his way and actually finds a little crease and barrels forward it'll be third and three at 6'3 221 pounds see motley with some natural instincts to run with that football and i just talked about when you take the threat away from a dual threat quarterback puts a lot of pressure on your passing game against this kind of defense and you've got to be able to throw the ball to be able to open up the running game. Well, Motley can give you a little bit of something in that backfield to make the defense have to be aware of his ability to run. It's tough to come in on first and 20 in your first possession, though. He hands off to McMillan, who cuts back. Trayvon McMillan diving near midfield. He almost broke it. And again, his first college football action almost made a huge play. A couple, a couple great blocks. Ryan Malik, the tight end, 88 to your left, and watch 45, Sam Rogers. He gets two of them right there, and then downfield. That is tremendous effort there. We've heard all about Sam Rogers having a great camp, the leader of this team. He really opened that up for McMillan to be able to pick up those extra yards for the first down. And Joshua Perry, the linebacker, grabbed an ankle to perhaps prevent a touchdown. A much needed conversion and Brewer is back in a quarterback. It's a wheel route and wide open as Sam Rogers, the fullback, makes a cut and scores. And now Lane Stadium is alive again, 51 yards. That ex walk on Kirk, he told us, earned a scholarship in a week. He, he's, he's not just a gutsy <laughs> no. leader, he's a football player. He sure is. He makes plays for this team. Sly slides the extra point in. A much needed 74 yard six play touchdown drive as the Hokies cut the lead in half. Sam Rogers didn't catch him. But one touchdown pass last year, that was against the Buckeyes. Both career touchdowns against Ohio State. 
Lane City awakened by that touchdown drive, and as they kick off, there are three Edmonds brothers. Number 14 is Trey, number 22 is Terrell, 49 is Tremaine, he's the true freshman. Sons of Farrell Edwards Jr., the Pro Bowl tight end. This may have never happened before, Kirk. I've never seen that. <laughs> seen two brothers, but how about that three? They don't get a chance to make a tackle because Sly boots it deep, but we'll, we'll see them on all the kickoffs tonight. And the touchdown brings back the crowd noise, trying to make life tough on the Buckeyes. Jones handed it off to Elliott and tried to make a block. Tailback didn't need much help. Got about 11. We talked about Rodgers. He's covering kickoffs. He's blocking people. With a shimmy. How about a little, little shoulder shake there by the uh -oh. big fella? Eli Apple's had some highlights in his career. That will not be any fun uh -oh. in, the, in the film room. No, it will not. And Braxton Miller. In the ball game, in the shotgun. High snap, Miller, hesitation. Makes a cut, but just runs into heavy traffic. So two carries, short gains for Miller. That defensive line playing that bare front, doing a better job of getting off blocks on that play. We've not seen a lot of that. Ohio State has dominated up front in the trenches. Such a different story from a year ago when four of the offensive linemen were new new faces with an inexperienced quarterback. Now, tonight, they've been playing well, but Virginia Tech showing some life on that play. Daddy Nicholas ripped off Miller's helmet, so he's got to come out of the game. Henley makes it second and 18. Jones again gets away that time from Nichols. He is tough to tackle, and he shows some speed, too. Chased that on the far side. You got to tackle differently against the big guy. And, and Daddy Nichols is a defensive lineman. He's 6'3", 227 pounds, and Cardell Jones is much bigger at 250 pounds. There's the athletic ability. He's third straight play. He gets in there. He goes right by Pat Elfine. But Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator from Virginia Tech, challenged his team the entire week, the entire camp, with Cardell Jones. You better go low or you're not going to be able to bring him down like a Ben Roethlisberger type of quarterback. And, and Chuck Clark, the safety there, top tackle, he really couldn't run down Jones from behind there. Third and four. Jones deflected, diving attack, intercepted. The pick is made by Desmond Fry on the deflection. Deion Clark got a hand at it. Bruce Smith, the great hokey, loves it. But Deion Clark, number 40, gets his hand on the football. And a tremendous effort to go into the air that time by Fry to come up with the interception. We'll take a peek to make sure he got his hands. It looks like he gets his hands and elbows underneath. Doesn't Body look like the box. That yeah. shot, though. Here's a great look at it. There's Clark with his hands up. Ball is free at that point. No interference calls, and it's just about whether or not he got his, his arms underneath the football. And from every look that we have so far, it looks like a clean interception. We talked about when they were down 14, they needed a spark. The missed field goal by Ohio State. The next possession, they go down and they get a touchdown by the big guy, Rodgers. Now their defense goes back out on the field. They create a turnover off of the tip. They get the ball back to the offense, and Brewer's on the sideline. And Motley, who gave him a little bit of something with his skill, his ability to run the football, is back out there. Yeah, he began the drive at quarterback, and then Brewer came in and threw the touchdown pass. Motley again takes off. Could not make Conley miss on the edge. Short game. See, when Brewer comes in, the tendency is they're going to hand it off or they're going to throw it. And so far, what we've seen so far from Motley is it's some kind of quarterback run game. And until he throws the ball, the defense will zero in on when number nine comes into the game on quarterback run. He's going to have to throw the football to be able to make the Ohio State defense respect that aspect of, of this offense when he's in the game. They hand it to the man in motion. That's Greg Stroman, and all over it is Darren Lee. So your options are very limited, again, so far from what we've seen. And so you, you're either thinking a, the quarterback's going to run it, or you're going to have a, a jet sweep. It's a totally different offense to contain there, and the overall team speed from Ohio State 
just too much there for that play. What's it like now for Michael Brewer, who comes in first action in the series, and he faces a third and 15? Not very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very hey, good. So at all. You don't you don't love what they're doing. You got to find a matchup, and this is where Bucky Hodges could come into play right here. Also, the other tight end right here, Malik. They're giving Hodges a cushion, but again, they need 15 yards. Brewer flushed. Throws, diving play made. He was very near the line of scrimmage. They're calling it a catch at the 35 yard line. Wow. Malik is the big tight end. Take Terrific it. catch. Well, he got his hand underneath. The ball went up in the air, but it was after his hand clearly was underneath it. Ohio State blitzes. But that time, Darren Lee got caught with his eyes in the backfield, and he didn't look around to see the receivers, in this case, Ryan Malik, in his area. He lost him, and Brewer found him after stepping up into the pocket, an area that he's really worked on this summer to improve in. You know, on first down, this is J.C. Coleman. So on third and 14, Brewer comes in cold, and, and the tight end makes the quarterback look good yeah. with a terrific grab. Well, well, it, and it was a bust in coverage from Ohio State, but it was, remember we talked yesterday with Scott Leffler, he said, you know, one thing with Michael Brewer was he came out of that Texas Tech offense where everything was quick, get the ball out of your hands. He's had to learn how to climb into the pocket. Climbing into the pocket in more of a pro style offense, especially on third down, is your friend. And that time he did climb up into the pocket, and that's what bought him the time to be able to eventually find Malik. We knew the tight ends would be key. So far, the Buckeyes have held Bucky Hodges without a catch. This is Coleman again. And a tough little customer. A short gain there. Joshua Perry stopped him. Now it'll be third and long again. Just by the addition of Brendan Motley has, has given this offense just enough of a kind of a, a ability to break some tendencies and a different look to make this Ohio State defense have to communicate and have to look left and right and make sure everybody's on the same page. So when you go back to 12 Brewer and then back to Motley, it's been two series, but we've seen some success here for the Virginia Tech offense with Motley coming in as a changeup. Nokies make a play on third and eight. Buckeyes showing pressure. They bring it. Brewer gets it out quickly, delivers far side. Cam Phillips, though, is going to be wrestled down immediately by Conley, short of a first, first down. And about four on fourth down now. I don't know what Cam Phillips is thinking there. He, he, he goes upfield. He should have worked it a little bit higher, but after he makes the catch, he goes back. Conley's there, and then you've got four or five other white jerseys. So instead of being about a yard short, because of what he decided to do with the ball after he caught it, now they're about four or five yards short. So Joey Sly missed from 50, but had the distance before. Tries this one from 46. Makes the correction and bangs it through. So the Hokies, who were reeling, reeling on the ropes, have scored 10 points and cut the Buckeyes' lead to four midway second quarter. This drive set up by a turnover and a couple of diving catches after they got the ball. Grant Paisley is a West Virginia fan. You saw the combo jersey he was wearing as he rocked Blacksburg a free concert last night. He did play some rock and roll. He played what satisfaction with the Stones. He played Enter Sandman for the crowd. Here. Oh, he knows his crowd. He told me he was practicing it more than playing it. <laughs> Oh, sure he's he kickoff great. again, and again, no action for the Edmonds brothers. Another touchback. Need eight on third down. Jones takes off. No hesitation. Cardell Jones rumbles for a first down and much more to the 45. So design run all the way. Now they, they felt pretty good about the quarterback run game coming in. And look how this play opens up on the left side. Nice pull by Pat Elfine. A block there by Zeke Elliott. The receiver's downfield. And next thing you know, number 12 is lumbering down for the big gain and a first down. I love how Elliott, besides being a star with the ball in his hands, is it embraces blocking. Remember how Tom Herman last year said his greatest gift as a player was how physical he is without the football. That's about as good a compliment as you can give a star running back. Only has two carries so far, one of them for 80 yards, and now a third, and Elliott 
danced for positive yardage. Heather? You guys were talking Bud Foster, some adjustments I overheard. He was saying that the D-line must adjust against the speed option, widen out the space between the guard and tackle split. Then he said the Bear defense must be able to adjust right or left, especially against the tight end, and that safety needs to know where the help is coming from at all times. A couple things to keep our eye on, guys. Put a down. Heather, 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 Heather break it down, 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 down there. Come on now, Red. Good job. Gonna Heather grab a grease board down there. <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> Safety support coming in, leverage the football. You got to make plays. It's a good chess match, though. Terrific point. And, and second down, they need five. Jones pressured, hit. Big fella gets it away anyway. Trying to get it to Samuel in traffic. And a cannon, their leading sacker a year ago, was there. He just kind of bounced off Cardell. He, he can him, though. Watch how he works to the top of the screen. Just goes around with quickness, Billy Price. That's one way to, to take away the effectiveness of Cardell Jones or any quarterback. And if you can get pressure, he hit that fifth step. He's ready to throw, and he's got a defensive lineman right in his face. Another third down. Ohio State three of six so far tonight. Empty backfield. Samuel in motion in the flat, and the ball was knocked away. Once again, Dion Clark, who created the carom, which led to the pick, Knock that pass down, fourth down. This has been a bread and butter play for Urban Meyer in this first half where they get the running back out into the flat, and you can see the defender running with him at the top. There's a long way for Stroman to get there, and if Clark doesn't get up and knock that down, that's another first down on the exact same play to the running back out of the backfield. They're just throwing it to him out the flat. The prime minister of defense, is that how Bud Foster was introduced to us? So loyal, came across... Beamer is a player at Murray State. He's been with him basically from the start here at Virginia Tech. Kendall Fuller makes the fair catch, and the Hokies defense rising up. They get the football back down only four. First down for the Hokies, 313 before halftime. Rodgers and caught the touchdown pass earlier has really been an impact player in this first half nice first down game I think with the adjustments from Virginia Tech I think we're starting to see an offensive line play a lot better than they did the first couple series where they just looked overwhelmed with Ohio State's athletic ability and, and uh, strength for these last two or three series they have uh, opened up some room and some running lanes for these backs in their in their zone read game no line with just one senior. In the center making his first start tonight, Eric Gallo. Brewer on second down. Throws in the traffic. Ford was there. Couldn't come up with it. I don't know if Von, Von Bell in coverage. I don't know if Von Bell got a hand on that or not, but it looks like Ford would be able to secure that for a catch and a first down. Ball's in his hands. And it came popped out. out. Yeah. It was very catchable. Hokies receivers have been very sure-handed tonight, though. Some excellent grabs. Yet another third down. We need six. It's Ford in motion. What guys rush for? In the flat, Cam Phillips going backwards again and knocked down well short of the marker. So they tried to get it to Phillips a couple times on third down. But he hasn't been able to get near the sticks. Conley on the tackle. That time, Ohio State just rushing four, as you said, Chris. They were showing blitz, but ended up rushing four and dropping seven. Darren Lee got pressure. It put him down, not always to blitz, but just as a rusher, especially with Joey Bosa out. And he got the pressure to force Brewer to get the ball out of his hands. So the Buckeyes will get the football back inside of two minutes to halftime. They've got a couple timeouts to work with. See if Elliott can set him up in good field position. Lefty Hughes boots it away. Low kick, fumbled by Elliott. Still loose on the sidelines. Hokies have it. So Elliott filling in for Jalen Marshall, suspended as punt returner, makes a mistake. And Tech is set up to perhaps take the lead. Wow. 
Second turnover for Ohio State. And when you try to knock off the number one ranked team, you're going to get a few opportunities. And you've got to be able to win the turnover margin. See Kelly, the one thing, you know he can run, but it's being able to secure from a punt from a left-footed yep. punter. It's tougher. The second time, he's been a little bit unsure. And that one, he ended up coughing up, and the ball goes back to the Hokies here before the first half with a minute 30 to go. So a couple of mistakes after Ohio State had jumped out to a 14-0 lead. Like Anthony Chagog ended up getting on top of that. Outside linebacker on special teams. Brewer pressured, loops it downfield. Ford, jump ball, wrestled at the two. And Brewer got hammered after the throw. Very slow to get up, but he's trotting down there now. Washington and Lewis converge in the tough quarterback. Remember how tough this guy is. He got beat up on Ohio State and a lot of other teams. Two defenders get to him. Von Bell got lost in coverage in man-to-man -man coverage against Isaiah Ford. His eyes may be looking into the backfield. Ford got behind him. And Bell fortunate that ball didn't end up going into the end zone for a touchdown. Ford's the guy who added 15 pounds, got a lot stronger this year. He looks a lot different than he did last year as a freshman. First and goal. It's Edmonds in the eye formation. He's got it. Trey Edmonds muscles near the goal line, stopped half yard short. And now if you're Virginia Tech, you, you start thinking about just taking your time here. You want to work that clock as bad as Ohio State's looked these last few series. Remember, they still are a quick striking offense. You take your time in the huddle. You work the clock down. You're at the half yard line. You still got the two timeouts. Exactly what they're doing. Same formation. Edmonds again. Same result. Stop short. It'll be third down, and now Beamer will have to spend the first of his timeouts. One left now, 21 seconds. Raekwon McMillan hammered him. Uh, that is a heck of an effort when the football is on the half yard line. Raekwon McMillan cleans it up, but it's the defensive line on the right side for Ohio State getting low. They end up pulling the guard. It looks like he's going to have a, a walk into the end zone. Tommy Shutt just throws his left shoulder left arm up into the air I think he slowed him down a bit but it was the linebackers that eventually cleaned it up and kept him short it's Edmonds offset now Brewer look to throw lobs it back to a wide open tight end Ryan Malik And a Hokie team that looked overmatched in the first quarter has stormed back to take the lead. What a call there by Scott Leffler. Sly gives the Hokies a three point lead. They cash in. The fumble by Elliott and moved 38 yards in four plays. Well, Urban Meyer's team looked dominant coming in here, ranked number one defending national champions and rolled to a 14 nothing lead, but 10 points for Tech off of two Ohio State turnovers. And the Hokies at home up 17-14. To Heather Cox with Urban. Chris, thank you, Coach. Quick 14-0 start. Now you go into the locker room down. What's the biggest puzzle you have to solve? Oh, uh, in big games, you know, playing a good defense and their opportunist offense. Two turnovers, you know, two turnovers. You drop that punch. So we'll regroup, come back out and play hard second half. You went with Cardell Jones to start the game. How would you assess his first half execution? It started off good. You know, we uh, we were having a, you know, you think about the misfires we had on those holding penalties. So uh, I think Cardell's doing okay, but we might get the other one ready too. Thanks, Coach. We'll let you get to it. <laughs> The other one is J.T. Barrett. 
Jones, 6 of 13, with a touchdown and an interception. He's also carried it eight times. So Brewer and the Hokies trying to beat a number one team for the first time in program history. Up 17-14 at the break. The Buckeyes came into Lane Stadium, scored 14 points quickly in the first quarter, but the Hokies close with a 17-zip run in the second quarter. Michael Brewer and Julian some some nice drives, Kurt. But Ohio State up 14 to nothing. And everything was going well for Cardell Jones. And then out, there was a turning point in the game and the miscues that Urban Meyer talked to Heather Cox about walking off the field in the first half. Ended up catching up to them and giving the Hokies second life, and they were able to capitalize on it. And let's get equal time now, Heather, with Frank Beamer. Chris, Frank Bremer said that the defense has to keep the run off the perimeter. They've got to force Ohio State to throw. I also asked him about Brendan Motley, and he said he will continue to use him in the second half at times. He says he's a big body. He changes the tempo and changes the look, kind of mixing things up for Ohio State's defense. Ohio State's offense will get the ball back to begin the second half. The Edmonds brothers may not get much action today because these kickoffs are flying beyond the end line. Kirk, I love the uh, the chess match here. You grab my uh, my props. This is uh, the stuff that Urban Meyer drew up about his offense against Bud Foster's defense a couple weeks ago. He loves the X's and O's. What, what are you going to do against the Bears here? <laughs> this is Bud Foster the other day drawing up his version of it. So right. we love to go to school with these coaches. Yeah. Your evaluation so far in the chess match. Well, the, the, the Bear defense last year gave Ohio State fits. They've had an entire offseason to kind of get their offense ready. It started great for Cardale Jones in Ohio State, but now we've seen some adjustments. Give, uh, give Bud Foster and the Hokies defense some credit for sticking to their guns and not getting away from who they are. Here they are again with that pressure look. And this is Miller. A little pop pass around the edge. Got three. The difference I've seen with Ohio State having the football has been up front. In, in the first two or three possessions, Ohio State's skill was able to have some room to work with, whether it was Jones when he had time to throw or the running back, Zeke Elliott, when he broke through and had some, some room to run with. We saw just a, a lot of domination up front in the trenches. In the last three possessions, that's not been the case. Jones, another keeper. Elliott, the lead block. And Jones sidesteps a tackler and gets out across the 45. And there's Zeke Elliott again without the football being physical and Jones cuts underneath that block from Zeke Elliott. People want to see him get the ball, but with the front that they're playing, it's hard to always get the ball to the running back because there's so many defenders up in the box. So that's why Zeke Elliott has to be more of a receiver tonight and then eventually mix him into the run game. That time a great block to free up Jones with a running lane. Jones has double the number of carries so far as Elliott looks to throw, loops it downfield. Braxton Miller makes the catch. Shakes a man and scores and quiets the crowd after his first touchdown as a receiver in his brilliant career. Again, live on the edge. You're going to make plays. Everyone's going to get excited, and then you're going to give up big plays. Watch this. This is a matchup you will take every time if you're Ohio State. Braxton Miller with his quickness against a safety Desmond Fry, 6'2", 200 pounds, and when you give him that kind of cushion, off to the line of scrimmage, there's no way that Fry is going to be able to stay with him out in space like that. Took the Buckeyes a minute seven to cover 75 yards in three plays and regain the lead. And Willoughby makes it 21 17. Interesting to see. How Braxton Miller was going to be used in this offense that has so many playmakers. And now you see why they're excited about this position shift for this guy. Well, yeah, and, and when you put him at the age, he doesn't have to be perfect with his technique as far as being able to get off the line of scrimmage the way some of the other receivers on the outside, like a Michael Thomas, would be. They have him off the line as an age. You can motion him, you can move him around. And it allows him to have a free release. And if you let him with his speed and quickness go up against a safety and you let him get to the outside like that, but I don't know if there's a safety in the country that can stay with Braxton Miller one-on-one -on -one coverage. There's nobody helping Fry back there behind him. Cool to see JT Barrett again down there right in the middle of it congratulating Cardale Jones. This is Jawan Green. He'll take a knee. See the adjustments from these two teams after Virginia Tech started to play a lot better there 
in this uh, in that second quarter. Brewer has time in the pocket, delivers to Malik, who got the tight end touchdown earlier. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's a good call here on, on first and ten. The reason it's a good call is they had some success in the first half with Malik right over the middle in between those two linebackers, and they're very confident with that play and gives them short yardage here. And Edmonds converts as the Hokies are using some tempo tonight. The, the tempo from Virginia Tech would be different from the, some of the other tempos that you see when you watch college football. They're, they're not going to make a living tempo, tempo, tempo the way Baylor might do that. But with the reason they're going tempo is anything they can do to try to wear down the Ohio State defense or to create some miscommunication or take away their aggressiveness, try to get them on their heels is what they're trying to do. Brewer has lots of time, flips it over the middle, catch made, and Edmonds stopped at the 45 by Perry, third and two. That was almost like a, a slip screen. They, 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 they had so much time, and they've been hitting the tight end behind the, the uh, linebackers. You could see it back here, that opening, they took it away, so then he just checks it down. Playing quick on third down, and they convert as Edmonds darts forward. So a couple of first downs, and the Hokies are in Buckeye territory. Well, all of a sudden, you create some momentum, and you create a, a rhythm. Now they are going a little bit quicker here. Edmonds again takes his way to the corner and picks up seven before he's knocked down by Apple. See, that, that's where you would miss Joey Bosa right there. Joey Bosa is known for his ability to rush a quarterback. But Hubbard that time was not able to seal the edge. They got outside of Hubbard, who's, who's, who's learning tonight on the fly as a young player, as a freshman. Joey Bose is very disruptive against the run. Edmonds again hit in the backfield and smothered. So a tackle for losses. Michael Hill is a reserve tackle, makes a play. And they said he had a great camp. The sophomore out of South Carolina said they got his weight down. Kind of a. Ask the coaches of all the defenders, you know, you always have one. That's Luke Fickle and Chris Ash. Who was that guy that kind of surprised you because of his effort in the offseason, the weight room? They both said Michael Hill, number 77. J.C. Coleman back in the game on third and four. Brewer steps up, takes a hit, delivers over the head. Uh, Malik, the blitz came and knocked him down. And he is holding his left shoulder. Adolphus Washington hit him, and I don't care how tough you are, Washington at 300 pounds can deliver a blow. Well, they brought the pressure from Perry up the middle, but it gets picked up. But they don't, are, are not able to sustain the block there on the one of the better defensive linemen on this Ohio State team. Washington is a big man, and he got a clean hit on Brewer. He got slammed to the ground, the yeah. non-throwing shoulder but he came off very quickly so now we'll see Brendan Motley Heather talked to Frank Beamer about him when they get the ball back this may be his game that did not look good for Brewer well Heather's report talked about how he, he comes in as a changeup. we noticed that more of an athletic guy who wants to run and Brewer is going to go straight looks like he might go straight in have that shoulder looked at but Motley did not really the passer and Beamer with Motley elects not to go for it on fourth and four from the 43. So Hughes drops the tip. Elliott this time just clears out, lets it bounce. A flag is down. And the Hokies will down it at the five. There are three markers on the field. Welcome back to Virginia Tech, where you just saw their quarterback, Michael Brewer, head to the locker room where he is being evaluated by head athletic trainer Mike Goforth. The news on him, Chris, he will not return due to a left collarbone injury. Look for Brendan Motley in his place. I do, thank you. Very tough news for the Hokie fans. As the Buckeyes take over, backed up at the two and feed Elliott straight ahead. Boy, Kirk, it has been a tough opening weekend for injuries that are in the serious variety really stars all over the place Taysom Hill and BYU's Hail Mary win out for the season Torian Folston is a key loss for Notre Dame running back James Conner a pit very good Scooby Wright 
you think, what, four to five weeks, maybe, one of the best defensive players in the country. Yeah, and now you add to the list Michael Brewer from Virginia Tech. They built their entire offseason around his, his abilities. Elliott, nothing has dropped for a half-yard gain by Chucky Clark. It'll be third down. Not to get too technical, because I'm sure there are people at home saying, why isn't Zeke Elliott running the football more? He only had eight carries last year. Why aren't they giving it to him more? He had the long run. The reason is the, the defensive scheme that Virginia Tech plays. They play with a nose guard right over the center. They cover both of the guards from Ohio State. It doesn't allow them to be able to block and then get up to the linebackers. It's very, very tough to run your running back against this scheme. Braxton, the quarterback on third and four. Hesitates. Cannot escape. Drop for a loss by Luther Matty. So the Buckeyes backed up with the penalty. Forced to a three and out. Yeah, and right now they're getting off blocks and playing with confidence. Such a different look. They're in that bare front still, but look at the penetration. Look at 92 Maddie get in there. He had a big game a year ago against Ohio State along with Nichols. And right now this defense is in beast mode, pinning their ears back and just getting after that line of scrimmage. First three and out for the Buckeyes. Greg Stroman does not come up to field this. It's not a good punt. The back spin will move it to the 42 yard line actually now closer to the 41 and now we'll get a look at Brendan Motley knowing that he's got to take it the distance if he can because he's not a change of pace guy Kirk who's just going to run it a couple times he's going to have to do you would think some things in the passing game. Well, we talked when he got in that, that when he comes in Ohio State's defense, they're thinking completely about zone read and quarterback run game. And we talked about how he should have to throw some to give them something else to think about. Well, now with Brewer out, we're going to have to see more than just quarterback run and run game from him. Mishandled snap and McMillan muscles forward. Ball comes out. Apple picks it up for Ohio State. A turnover, the first of the night for Tech. You know, Ohio State defenders ripping at the ball. It looked like Sam Hubbard might have gotten in there and tried to pull it out, and it's going to come down to, was the ball out before his knee touched? Coleman hoping he was down, checking the replay screen right now. He's, looks like he's still up unless there is a replay that will show his one of his knees down. Initial contact by Holmes. Actually, it is Holmes who's it looks like his body is still off the ground. It looks like he's laying on top of defenders. Yeah, Michael Hill was holding him up. Really good job there by Jalen Holmes, who had a hold of that football the entire time. Incidentally, from Norfolk, Virginia, Jalen Holmes. He's coming with that go line. I've seen Reggie Roby used to wear a time the running back a, watching the game. <laughs> Most tennis players who wear one get paid for it. Miller in the shotgun gets free on the edge. Braxton Miller's loose spin move. Miller heading for the end zone. You think he's made an impact in his first game at H back? Wow. Ty Again, I think people forgot how explosive Braxton Miller is with the football in his hands. When you get him out on the edge and you give him a little bit of room, this is what he can do to not just Virginia Tech, but anybody Ohio State plays. Watch this spin move. I think in the Madden, that might be the B button. That's a nice spin move there. Nobody put a finger on him with that spin move, but a great block by Paris Campbell downfield that gave him the room to get the yards and eventually build up that speed. So Miller has had a pair of 50-yard touchdowns caught one earlier then shifts back to his old position at quarterback and runs for a 50-yard touchdown. What did you and I talk about on the way over to the game today? We said with all the talk of Cardale Jones and JT Barrett, I have a feeling. I'll give you credit. You said I, I number did, I, one tonight. I, I, with the ball in his hands, yeah. whether it was receiving or just getting out on the edge. I, I, I just, two years ago, he was at times one of the, uh, that was two years ago. He's one of the more explosive players that, as a quarterback. You knew when he would have a chance to get out and play receiver, oh, he'd be doing pretty. some of this. He's beautiful. It's a 360. And, it's, and he's only going to get better with the more reps that he gets out on the edge. But Urban Meyer, give him and Ed Warner and that offensive staff credit for coming up with ways they eased him in early in this game. And the more and more he's kind of settled in, the more they've given him a chance to make plays. And the, the injury to Brewer really 
brought the energy out of the stadium. It was rocking. Even after the Buckeyes had taken the lead, Tech was marching, and the injury to their quarterback has brought everybody down. McMillan hammered hard just across the 15. Final minute of the quarter, McMillan can't get the edge, not for a loss. Dolphus Washington really beginning to impose himself. Right now you have 11 white jerseys when the ball is snapped, running into the run game. And they got guys taking away the quarterback and the running back. Play action on first down. Motley looking long for Ford into double coverage, and it's picked off. Tyvis Powell came across and grabbed the football. Sam Hubbard, the fill-in for Bosa, pressured the quarterback, and now back-to-back -back possessions end in turnovers. Tyvis Powell here just plays backyard football. He just sits back and reads this the entire way. Like the call. Like the idea to try to take a chance to get the ball thrown downfield. They show cover two. Powell's here and he'll work to the middle and then just read the quarterback's eyes and come over and make the play. He'll sink back into coverage. See how he's getting back here? He's getting back. Entire time he just, and by the way, he's got probably the best ball skills of anybody in that secondary. Went up and high pointed that football. Conley right there stride for stride as well with Ford. It took a shot downfield with the young quarterback with the Coleman fumble cashed in and now the interception in the final play of the third quarter Elliott mishandled the snap was lucky to come up with it and dropped for no gain by Van Dyke so end of the third quarter and Ohio State scoring 14 points after trailing at halftime including this filthy spin move by Braxton Miller for a 50 yard touchdown. I think all Ohio State fans enjoy not just the impact on the game, but the renaissance, the return of Braxton Miller, who was such a soldier for three years in this program and had to sit out the championship year a year ago as this man, Jones, starred. And at the last second, he flips the ball downfield. Johnny Dixon is wide open. He's finally corralled as Dixon had his first career catch. How about this by Jones? You could see that Johnny Dixon broke away but this is arm strength and recognition. I thought he might give up on the play and just end up trying to pick up two or three yards on the scramble. He breaks contain, he gets outside. Look at the top of your screen right there. You could see the defender gave up on it and came in on Riley, who had the big pick six last year against Ohio State. But he'll jump pass and gets the ball about 30 yards downfield to Johnny Dixon. Dixon, one of those receivers making his debut tonight, trying to make an impact on this coaching staff. Third down. Hokies bring pressure late. Jones hit, and a flag comes in as the ball sailed over the head of Thomas. Flag is in the secondary. There's two of them. Jones pass intended for Braxton Moore. Incomplete flag is down. It's going to be against Virginia Tech. Another interference call. Pass interference. Defense number 22. 15 yard penalty. First down. And second this drive. Foster's defense really backed up now. The favorite route of Thomas is get to the inside and he pulled on his jersey there. Crowd reacting after the interference. But if I'm defending Michael Thomas, I'm taking away his inside. Between last year and even tonight, most of his success on those slants and posts to the inside. And Kendall Fuller, their star corner, out of the game. He limped off. He wasn't in there to cover Thomas that time. They went right after him. And now Jones walks into the end zone. And the Buckeyes are pulling away. Hadn't quite been able to get loose tonight, but this time he's able to find some blocks and there's a nice crease. And I think Virginia Tech starting to wear down a little bit physically and mentally. There's the right guard, Elfine, Zeke Elliott with a nice block. And because of the formation, there's once they made those blocks at the line of scrimmage, there's nobody left to stop Jones from going into the end zone. Jones is a passer tonight. Nine of 18, 186, and two touchdown passes with the pick. And now has a touchdown run. He's rushed for 99 yards. Mm -hmm. 
McMillan at the two. Gets a crease. And it was the kicker who got down there and ran into him. Jack Willoughby got in the way of the returner to help prevent a huge return. Heather? Chris, I had a chance to actually just talk to quarterback Michael Brewer. He did share with me that x-rays revealed that that left collarbone is broken. Now, the tentative plan right now is to have surgery tomorrow to repair it. Doctors told him it's about a four to five week recovery period. And then he joked with me in good spirits. He said Urban Meyer dodged a bullet tonight. <laughs> well, we certainly hope the surgery goes well. Four to five weeks means he could potentially return mid-season. For Virginia Tech's sake, after the way their seasons have gone these last two or three years, you, you just hope he's back as quickly as possible. In the meantime, it's going to be the Motley Show. Darren Lee hammered Rodgers, the fullback. He was the MVP defensively in the Sugar Bowl. I think, I think really the last three games, most notably the Alabama game that you just yep. talked about, the Oregon game, he... I don't know if there's a player that gained more confidence from last year to the beginning of the year as a first time starter to the end of the year than him on the defense. I didn't think he had a very good game against the Hokies a year ago when it was all pretty fast for him, but he's a different player now. Motley shows his escapability, picks his way across the 30. Dante Booker, backup linebacker, stopped him. It'll be third down. So Ohio State defense going back to a couple years ago, Chris, you remember a lot of people questioned Urban Meyer and the defensive scheme. They were a little bit conservative in their approach. Went out and in the offseason going into the 2014 National Championship season, decided to become much more aggressive, press man, quarters coverage in the face of the receivers. And they dictated things a lot more to offenses a year ago. And that, of course, that trend will continue this year when Motley under pressure flips it short it's a screen and Edmonds couldn't come up with it well they emphasized tackling some new mm -hmm. techniques before last year ended up being perhaps the best tackling team in the country and it continues to be an emphasis how would you rate their performance tonight in that department I think they've been good but at the same time I think they they've done enough for Luke Fickle to be able to get their attention you know they, they, they played well but they've given up some plays so I think if you're a highly ranked team, it's it's nice to be able to win a game. But if you're a coach, secretly, you win the game. And if you have some things, we can go back to the film room and say, you know, hey, guys, it's a great win. But look, we've, we've got a long way to go if you think we're going to become a dominant defense. Hughes wants it down there. Elliott lets it bounce out of bounds. Will we see JT Barrett? He's been warming up. The helmet is on. And perhaps the man who filled in for Miller, led the Buckeyes to a great regular season last year, will come in. Now the electricity about three hours ago. But then, though, he's couldn't really build when I got down 14. Scored 17 in a row, but it's been all Ohio State after halftime. Hand off to Elliott. And it is J.T. Barrett who set a Big Ten record last year. Miller, of course, you recall, was hurt in practice before the opener. Struggled a lot against the Hokies, but went on to create a Big Ten record 45 total touchdowns. For Jones, looks like his night is through. Name the starter, and you wonder if the complexion changes at all, if they could potentially use Barrett, not just in mop-up, Still has a role on this team. Absolutely. Leadership role that is heavily valued by Meyer. And there's a role as a ball carrier. Barrett looking for the corner. Makes a huge play. And see, Cardell Jones can run the football, but, but that's probably more of a 10-yard gain or 15-yard gain. And when you put 16 in there with JT Barrett, you've, you've got a little bit more quickness. See, the entire game, we've seen these outside linebackers, Deion Clark and and Van Dyke, they've been kind of baiting and trying to play a cat and mouse game, and it's been pretty effective against Jones. Here, you got a guy that's attacking downhill, running option football, and he goes down and picks up huge yards. It's a 40 yard run, yet another explosive play for this Ohio State offense. Barrett looks to throw, and wide open for a touchdown is Michael Thomas. 
Ryo State pouring it on. You know, Michael Thomas had a lot of energy about him leading into this week, not just the start of the season, but the matchup against Kendall Fuller. If LeBron's still watching this, you're going to get another tweet. Watch this move by Thomas. Little shake and oh go. And that's, the, that's one of the top corners in the country. He went right by him. That's not just... You just kind of giving a guy a little bit. This is a great little stop and go, and you and he made Fuller hesitate enough where he, he just buckled him and he went right by him. Kendall will hear about that one from his big brothers in the NFL. McMillan knocked down across the 15. Samuel and Miller, of course, are H backs, not. You call it a traditional receiver. He's Motley scrambles across the 30 for a first down. This receiving group without three players that will not only contribute, but are guys that will be added in right away when they get ready for Hawaii. I mean, Jalen Marshall, one of the more talented guys that they have on the offense. Dontre Wilson, Corey Smith. I mean, like we said earlier, you add those three to what you're seeing tonight. Doesn't really feel like there's a shortage of athletes on the oh, field tonight no. for Ohio State on offense. No. Play action. Motley steps up, delivers a throw on the sideline, but it's too wide for Isaiah Ford. Incomplete. This is Chris Durkin, big 6'4", 219 freshman, redshirted last year. So. He is at least familiar with the, the scheme and what they do. But that'll be that'll be for Frank Beaver and Scott Leffler and and the offensive staff. That, but that is as significant a loss as you could see yeah. with a weekend full of injuries. Well, it's a typical situation in college football. It's what made Ohio State's journey to a national title last year all the more remarkable to end up the year with a third quarterback playing superbly in the last three games. Motley again fires over the middle to Sam Rogers and the fullback makes the catch for a first down inside the 30. So this is insurmountable, but perhaps Motley can gain some confidence going forward yeah. if he can make some plays here. Yeah, and, that, and that's what you, you want to do. Frank Beamer actually challenged the whole offense when they ran out on the field, even though this game is out of reach. It's for that very reason, not just finishing strong, but trying to build any anything that you can build on at all going in to the rest of the season. McMillan. Hammered down. Damon Webb, the backup corner was there. I think Urban Meyer will be happy about along with Luke Fickle, Chris Ash, is to be able to build a lead in week one gives you a chance to get game snaps for that next unit and that may not seem like that big a deal but any any kind of game reps you can receive just helps you that next time you go out there and maybe it's in a they're through an injury maybe you're asked to play in the first or second quarter in a meaning meaningful snaps McMillan again and Ohio State which opened with a road game a true road game for the first time since 98 typically they'll Open up against Navy or a MAC team. A very tough opener in a hostile house, but this team with a mature attitude that told Meyer, don't worry about revenge and payback as motives. We're, we're self motivated and obviously extremely talented. 10 of the top 150 draft prospects, according to Todd McShay, 10 on this team. And one notable guy wasn't even here tonight in Bosa. McMillan will move the chains again, first down at the 18. And first down, and feed Edmonds short game. Incredible to think that Virginia Tech had a 17 to 14 halftime lead in this game. Outscored 28 to nothing. And Ohio State just pulling away, and it was the big plays. It was Braxton Miller. Yeah, it sure was. Averaging over 10 yards a play tonight against a Bud Foster defense, which is not an easy thing to do. Think back to where they were a year ago. Worst offensive game by far at home against Virginia Tech. That scheme caused fits for them and what they tried to do. Motley escapes. 
lofts it into traffic in the end zone for a touchdown. Isaiah Ford, as Motley does a good job extending the play, and makes his first career touchdown pass. Again, you love to see the fight. You love to see Motley here show what he can do. Good effort to get outside of, of Chris Worley and break contain. And once he gets outside of there, now he's just buying time and trying to wait for one of his receivers to break free. And the Ohio State, the backup secondary, you see their eyes looking in the backfield, watching him and losing the receiver who was able to work to an open area behind them. So perhaps something to build on for a Virginia Tech team that's going to have to make do without Michael Brewer in the coming weeks. No real shakeup as the Okies go for the little trickery on the onside kick, but the bounce comes up right into the hands of Ohio State. They make the recovery inside the last two minutes, and that's Joshua Perry, the starting linebacker, the veteran on the hands team. He's your guy, Kirk. He's everywhere. Found his he's way to the Blue Ridge Mountains. He's got a uh, his own bobblehead dog. Bobblehead. He's, he's got a brand. The talk about he or JT Barrett, how's it going to go? All that now is behind not just him, but also JT Barrett. Now we can just focus on he's the quarterback. He's the guy they're going to go with for now and just continue to be the leader that he can be, the best leader he can be for the team. And ball in the game and he spins for a gain, and that'll add to their offensive total before that snap of 567 yards. And I think the other thing you'll see is as the season goes on, you'll get back to seeing that when the receivers all come back, JT, or, or uh, your pardon, Zeke Elliott, a much, much bigger part of the offense to complement the vertical passing game of Cardale Jones. I think you'll see that grow as the year goes on. So the Hokies went to Columbus and spoiled the Buckeyes home up near a year ago. Ohio State rolls into Blacksburg, didn't want to call it payback or revenge. Just call it an emphatic statement. 42-24 for Myers' number one ranked team. Sport Titter coming up next from the studio with Scott Van Pelt. So long for now from Blacksburg.